Hello and welcome to the Racing News Show. This week in the world of racing, we learned that you do not disturb Mark Cavendish when he's adjusting his cleats. Oh no. Yes, that is quite the death stare, isn't it? Now, we also learned that Matthew van der Poel is seriously considering racing the Gravel World Championships next year. Oh yeah, and we know that because we asked him. That and 18 further questions, all of which will be in tomorrow's GCN show, which is pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, we interrupted his Zwift session and stuck a camera in his face. He had nowhere to go. Before we crack on with news and results from this past week, we are super lucky to have cycling statistician and uber nerd Killian Kelly delivering a very special stat attack. Now you can normally find him lurking on the weekly World of Cycling show over on GCN Plus, but we have persuaded him to do one for the racing news show. So assists, a term you might be familiar with if you follow other sports, but not really cycling. However, he has been diving into the stats. Who are the teammates who most influence race results. Enjoy. Usually on Stat Attack and in cycling in general, the focus is on wins. Who wins races? How many races did they win? How did they win them? But this time, I thought I'd try and look at the racing a little bit differently and consider the concept of an assist. In other sports like football, soccer or basketball, the concept of an assist is straightforward. The final pass in a team move. In cycling, also a team sport, it's much less obvious. What is a cycling assist? Well, I've tried to make it as simple as possible. A rider being a teammate of the winning rider on the day they won the race, ignoring time trials because they're a much more explicitly individual affair. Now in any given race, you could argue that the presence of a rider may not have contributed to their team winning whatsoever. And one need only look at any race in the career of Dan Lloyd to conclude that race results can be achieved in spite of teammates rather than because of them. Nevertheless, all caveats considered, the results, I think, are quite interesting. So, which riders had the most assists throughout 2021? On the women's side, it's probably no surprise that the riders with the most assists came from SD Works, who have the best squad in women's cycling by some distance. The most assists achieved was 12, a total reached by both Demi Vollering and Alina Cicchini. For Vollering, it's probably no big deal. She wins enough on her own not to care too much about a measure such as this. But for Cicchini, it's nice to acknowledge the work of a proper super domestique who didn't win a race all year and actually hasn't won one for over two years now. So hats off to you, Elena. Your presence on a team on race day is the biggest indicator of potential success for a teammate in all of women's cycling. It was also interesting to note while I was working all of this out that Annemiek van Vluten had zero assists for 2021. Not that that's what she's paid for, but it does go to illustrate just how much that Movistar team revolves around her. If she's in the race for Movistar, she is the race for Movistar. On the men's side, I think anyone who followed the season quite closely could give a good educated guess as to who the rider was with the most assists. Are you thinking of someone yet? With 19 assists in 2021, the answer is Michael Morkoff, the man who dragged Mark Cavendish level with Eddie Merckx onto 34 Tour de France stage wins. He also helped with victories for Sam Bennett, Kasper Askreen, Remco Venepol, Julian Alaphilippe, Alvaro Hodge and Yannick Steimler. Again, probably not breaking news, but just as with Van Vluten, this stat about Morkoff gives evidence to what we thought we already knew just from chats and anecdotes. Stats are fun, we're learning, we're learning. The entire De Koenig Quickstep team is actually rather ridiculous. Every rider on the team got at least one assist, including the stagiaires that were there at the end of the year, with an average rider assist score across the entire squad of 10.2. For context, the average across the entire men's world tour is under three assists per rider. But what I found most fascinating in this team, a team which won 65 races in 2021, although all of them did get on the assist scoreboard, only two riders achieved just one assist on the team. Now the first rider was Sam Bennett. This is perhaps unsurprising and quite explainable. He started the year as the main fast man, their big sprinter, until he wasn't anymore after he fell out with Patrick Lefebvre and then he barely raced for them again. In general, the sprinters on the team scored below average assists. Remember, the average for a rider on this team is over 10. And for example, Fabio Jakobsen got seven, Mark Cavendish got six. But it's the identity of the other rider with just a single assist. 
which got me intrigued. It was Remco Evenepoel, the only time he was riding this year and someone on the team other than him won was the final stage of the Tour of Belgium in June when the stage was won by our resurgent Mark Cavendish. And it barely even counts as an assist because Evenepoel himself also won that day as he wrapped up the race overall. Now you might look at this and shrug and think, so what, he's one of the team leaders. When he's racing he's supposed to win himself, that's why they pay him. And while that is probably true, there's a reason I think Evenepoel's 1 is far more surprising than, say, Van Vluten's 0. Van Vluten is in a team where she is undoubtedly the main star. Nobody even comes close. De Kooning Quickstep is different. They very purposefully try to share the spoils around and not revolve around only one rider, with their wolf pack one for all and all for one kind of mentality. Look no further than the double world champion Julian Alaphilippe. He was present 11 times this year for his teammates' victories. Kaspar Askreen, 12. Stiebar, 13. Ballerini, 14. Lampard, 14. Evenepoel's 1 is a true outlier. And given what happened with Belgium at the World Championships, where Wout van Aert claimed that Evenepoel had explicitly not followed team orders and when the GOAT himself, Eddie Merck, said about him, if there is only one leader, you really shouldn't take Evenepoel. He rides mainly for himself. So again, I believe the stats are revealing what we probably thought we knew already, but it takes it beyond anecdotes. Is it true what Eddie Merck said, that Remco Evenepoel only rides for himself? When it's all there in a glorious colour-coded spreadsheet, it starts to become undeniable. It starts to become fact. Oof, shots fired at Remco Evenepoel there. What do you all think about that? Do the stats back it up, or is it just because he's actually so good he's always the de facto team leader and so can't assist? Let us know in the comment section. Now, results time. Cyclocross took to the sand of Coxsider on Sunday for the latest round of the World Cup series. Now, it is one of the classic events, and if you didn't watch it, do check out the replays available on GCN+, Plus. even though you will know the results, because I'm about to tell you. You won't regret it, though. Now, in the women's race, Anna Marie Verst took her first major victory in some time after her career had been derailed by a shoulder surgery last year. She attacked Denise Betzema on the penultimate lap to draw out a sizeable margin of victory. World champion Lucinda Brand finished third. In the men's race, Eli Isabet also attacked on the penultimate lap to seal victory. He distanced Toon Ert, who was then caught by the chasers and could only hold on for third, beaten in the sprint by Lauren Sveik. The previous day, most of the field had been in action at the Super Prestige Series in Merck's Place. Isabit won that one as well, narrowly beating Quinton Hermans this time, and then Lawrence Fake in third. In the women's event, it was a case of the same riders as the following day, but just in a different order. Lucinda Brand won from Anna Marie Verst and Denise Betzema taking third. Now, from mud and sand to sweat and pixels now, the Zwift Racing League finished last Monday night for the Premier Division and Tuesday for the rest of us on a savage new course in Mercury Islands. The Countryside Tour featured a gravel climb that was tackled three times with the finish of the race at the summit on that final time up. Now, despite this new course, Next Esports, presented by Ensured, won again, making it a mighty impressive clean sweep of victories in the men's series. Six from six. Awesome, frankly. Uh, and in the overall, they of course took that comfortably. Canyon Esports finished second ahead of BZR Sports Solid in their first season in the Premier Division. Now, in the women's race, Kristen Kulczynski of Team 2024 took the individual victory, showing that given the right course, her impressive climbing ability makes her the rider to beat. However, on the night, it was Heino who took the team win, clinching the series overall and maintaining their unbeaten run in the ZRL Premier Division. Canyon Esports matched their male teammates with second overall, and Aeonian, winners of round one, finished in third. On the track, the Ghent Six concluded on Sunday with Kenny de Ketteler and Robbie Hayes taking the victory, helping to crown a fitting finale to Ketteler's career. He retires at the end of this season. They held off Roger Kluger and Jasper de Boist in the final Madison, with Michael Morku and Lassen Norman Hansen finishing in third. There was a sad exit though for Mark Cavendish, who crashed out and had to be taken to hospital on a stretcher. Now, as we film this, we are still waiting for an update on his condition, but he was up and walking immediately after the crash, 
so hopefully it's not too serious and his pre-season training isn't interrupted. His partner on the night, Ilio Kaiser, was able to carry on without him and finished a valiant fourth for the duo. Not bad riding a Madison on your own and still managing to maintain their overall position. In transfer news, Anne Santesteban, Jess Allen, Sabu Gurme, Michael Hepburn and Chris Yul Jensen all extend their contracts with Team Bike Exchange. Meanwhile, Matteo Catanio and Joseph Cerny extend as well with the Koenig Quickstep. Also joining the De Koenig Quickstep Wolfpack is Ilan van Wilder from Team DSM. Things had turned a little bit sour between the Belgian and Team DSM by all accounts, with the two parties nearly going to court over the early termination of his contract, which originally had another year to run. Fortunately, they finally came to an agreement and van Wilder is now free to support De Koenig in their GC ambitions for the coming years. Now, that is about it for this week's Racing News Show. We have got loads of live action for you over on GCN Plus this weekend. Another double header of cyclocross, the X20 Bad Camera Series on Saturday, and the next round of the Cyclocross World Cup in Besançon on Sunday, plus the next round of the Track Champions League as well. The first round was absolutely awesome, so make sure you watch this one. Set a date and a note in your diaries. Now lastly, if you want some competitive racing but slightly longer, check out the documentary on GCM Plus that comes out tomorrow. Round the world record holder Jenny Graham tackles the Pan-Celtic race, nearly 2,000 kilometers of it. It's quite the watch. Now that's it from me. Do make sure you get involved in the comments section. Let us know what you think about Remco Evenepoel. Has Killian Kelly outed him as a non-team player? That's it from me. See you next week.